In lesson two, we'll draw the arena, which is this pattern of lines. We'll also make the canvas bigger and fill the snake with a green color and make it somewhat transparent. These are the changes from lesson one to lesson two. And we're creating some additional constants to help with the geometry and some variables for the same purpose. And then when we create the canvas, we're making the canvas bigger based on the available space. Here's some more setting the values for the variables related to geometry. And then in draw, we are making the background white. We're turning on smoothing, which uses anti-aliasing to improve the drawing. And then we're calling a new function draw arena. And then before we draw the box, we fill with green and um, somewhat opaque. The, most of the work is in draw arena, so let's take a look at that and talk about that. I may come back and look at this and say that I've over-engineered it, made it too complex. How are you going to draw all these lines is basically it, while making somewhat readable code. And I've created a little domain-specific language that encodes the way that these lines are drawn. So, for instance, um, the right horizontal line. So here's the right face. Here are the horizontal lines. Well, these symbols indicate what happens to the values on each of the axes. So this symbol here means the maximum value. So these, these uh, the horizontal lines, the endpoints, they have the same x value. Uh, they may not look like it, but it's 3D, so these are over to the right by the same amount. So these all have the same x value, and that's the maximum x value. The minimum x value would be over here. Okay, so that's what that stands for. For y, um, y is increasing. That's what the arrow means. So it varies, and there's a loop that produces 0, and this next value, and the next value, all the way until you get to the maximum value. And then the z value, uh, the endpoints of the line span the minimum and maximum. So here's the minimum z, here's the maximum z for this line. For the next line, it's, the z's are the same, minimum and maximum, minimum and maximum. So they're not varying. For each of these lines, one end has minimum z, the other end has maximum z. Okay, let's consider the, the right vertical lines, these lines here. What happens to x? Well, that's the same. They're all in the plane where x is the maximum value. Uh, what about for the y's? Well, now the y's span the minimum and maximum. So for, and, they're, and they're the same values. So this, this point here has the minimum y value, minimum y value, minimum y value. These here, maximum y value, maximum y value, maximum y value. The thing that's changing for these vertical lines on the right face is the z. So z starts out at the minimum value here. This line is z equals minimum value. And then the next increment up, working our way up to um, the maximum value for z. So this is the scheme that I um, invented. I'm not claiming it's original or anything, but I think it expresses two directions each on three faces, what happens, how, the, how we make the lines. Okay, so here's the implementation of that. Um, I want you to be able to see all this. So for, for each of these face codes, codes for a face, actually, it's codes for a direction on a face. So I should change that. I'll tell you what, let me just call them like uh, code sets. Okay, so for each um, of these code sets, code set, for each code set singular, 
Okay, for each of these six code sets, then here's the loop that varies the, the arrow part of it. So remember, here the Y varies, here the Z varies, here Y varies, here X varies, and so on. So for the, the varying part, we need this loop. And then, oh, I think I've further simplified this. So this is really going to be just, uh, just really an empty array of six values. I've got it set to zeros, but they're all they're all overridden. Now, for each uh, for the code set, we're going to split it so that we can access the x and y and z codes separately, and then we're going to consider the codes and then do something. We're going to set the we're, going to, we're building this array of six coordinates so that ultimately we can call the line function and give it these six arguments. We take the array and we use the spread operator to make the six arguments for line. Okay, so in the case of the, that we want it to be the coordinate for this dimension on both sides of the line to be the maximum, here we set two things to C max. So what does this mean, the I and the I plus three? In this form of the for each, we not only get the, the code, but we get the index of the code. So the first code is for X, and that has an index of zero, which corresponds to this. And also this. This is X1, Y1, Z1, X2, Y2, Z2. So we use this I and I plus 3 to get at the right elements of this array for the dimension x, y, or z that we're currently working on. And so if the value is supposed to be set to the maximum for each end of the line, then that's what we do here. And if it's supposed to be set to minimum, that's what we do here. And if it's supposed to change from the loop, then we set both um, this one and this one together, or this one and this one together, this one and this one together, to V. And then in the case where we want to have uh, spanning the minimum and the maximum, we set the lower one to the min and the higher one to the max. So I'm curious um, if you think this is just insanely complex and I should have done it another way. Um, I tried it some other ways, um, but let's see what you think. Okay, so that concludes lesson two. We now have a snake and an arena. See you next time.